let's build a lightweight tiny whoop with a top loading battery, carbon fiber frame, and high KV motors. This project is a build guide for the 65mm tiny whoop that was highly inspired by the Fractal 65 by Fractal Engineering. Here is a list of all the materials I used to complete this project. You will need 4 RC in power GTS version 3 0802 27,000 KV motors. I will be using Gemfan 1608 props. For the battery connector I am using an A30 female connector by Flywoo. You can also use a BT 2.0 female connector by Beta FPV. A Runcam Nano 3 FPV camera. This project was built in the Fractal Whoop style. In other words, this design is lightweight and stresses minimalism and robustness. Another requirement is a Happy Model B Whoop 65 frame. A carbon fiber frame by TCMMRC. However, calling it a fractal style whoop is not an accurate description. Therefore, for reasons of clarity, I will refer to this build as the Nux 65. It is my attempt at making something of my own while at the same time paying homage to Fractal Engineering's creative design choices. In order to secure the whoops and the motors to the frame, you will need 12 1.4 by 5 millimeter screws. This build will require three tiny 3D printed parts, which will be printed in TPU. I have designed the files for this project in SolveSpace. You can download and modify the original files from my GitHub repository. A link is in the video description. You can also download the STL files from any of the following sites, Thingiverse, Thangs, and Printables, also listed in the video description. A like or follow on any of the above mentioned pages would be greatly appreciated. We will be adding a UFL connector and dipole antenna to the flight controller. I have added this modification on most of my tiny whoops because it improves the video signal. The biggest drawback is the added weight and is therefore a performance trade-off. This is a simple upgrade and for me I think it's worth it. Before getting started, add a large tip to your soldering iron and set the temperature to approximately 350 degrees Celsius. Press the tip of the soldering iron to the back of the board where the antenna wire pokes through the PCB and pull the antenna out with a tweezer. Add some flux followed by some fresh solder to the antenna pads for the flight controller. Hold the UFL connector with your tweezer next to the ground connection on one side of the solder pad. Melt the solder onto the side of the connector. This will anchor it to the board. Repeat the same process on the other side. As a last step, connect the live element of the antenna. Before continuing, make sure that the connections are solid. With your tweezers, pull on the connector from different angles to test for loose or unconnected solder joints. Next, set your multimeter to continuity mode and probe the connector to make sure that the connections are not shorted out to one another. These checks are very important. If your connections are not solid or shorted, you will fry your video transmitter. I 
recently wrote an article about switching to the BT 2.0 connector and why it is better. You can read about this from my link in the video description. Ironically, I discovered the A30 connector a week later. The A30 connector is essentially the same as the BT 2.0 with a minor change. With some side cutters, remove the PH 2.0 connector and uh, make sure your power leads are at least 5.5 centimeters long. If they are shorter, you will have a hard time connecting them to the battery. Solder the wires to the connector. Ground is ground is a nice mnemonic device to help you remember the polarity of the BT 2.0 or the A30 connectors. That means that the rounded side of the connector is always the ground. Don't forget to add heat shrink tubing before soldering. The benefit of this connector is that the design has been open sourced. I will be exclusively buying A30 connectors in the future due to this fact. For this project, I ordered a pack of five from Flywoo. I've been using uh, MG Chemicals 422C silicone conformer coating for years and am happy with its performance. One bottle will last you quite a long time. Before applying, remove dust and oil with isopropyl alcohol and a toothbrush. Conformal coating can insulate connections and cause your board to malfunction if you apply it to the wrong areas. Therefore, we will use blue tack and cover all the components on the board that should not be insulated. Adding silicone conformal coating is not necessary, however, there are some benefits to adding it. One is a water resistance. Conformal coating protects your board from moisture. For most Tiny Whoop pilots, we fly indoors, so water is not much of an issue. Albeit, having conformal coating has saved my bacon a few times in the past, crashing into wet grass, puddles, sinks, toilets, or open drinking containers. Can happen. Apply an even layer on both sides. It will harden under UV light, so set it into direct sunlight or use a UV flashlight. Added shock resistance is another advantage to silicone conformal coating. It creates a thick film over the flight controller's tiny SMD components, thus adding extra support for hard crashes. The components have small blobs of solder holding them onto the board that can be jarred loose. Let's face it, we crash all the time and need all the help we can get. In order to cut down on weight, let's remove the motor plugs. This build is a prototype, which means I was planning on keeping the motor plugs, and after reconsidering, I decided to remove them due to weight issues. However, if you plan on removing the motor plugs, it is best to do that first before adding the silicone conformer coating. Bridge all three pins on the back side of the motor plug with a thick blob of solder. While holding the tip of the soldering iron to the solder blob, pull the plug out with your tweezers. Repeat this process for the other motor plugs. Connecting the motor wire is simple, but due to the small size of the board, it is tedious. Cut the plugs off the motor wires. Before connecting, apply a bit of flux to the motor pads and motor wires and pretend them with some solder.
Louisiana purchase. I'll tell you what it means. It means I'd like to sell you. Solder the motor wires onto the flight come controller. On, come on, you all can go to town and way down to New Orleans. Louisiana salesman with nothing in his jeans. That's why I'd like to sell you New Orleans. Come on, come on, and do all the things there are to do in New Orleans. Where does that heat come from? That rhythmic beat. Rinse come and from, repeat. And that red meat come from New Orleans. Louisiana purchase. Cut out each loop from the frame with flush cut side cutters. Try to cut as closely to the ring as possible. In my humble opinion, the coolest innovation of Fractal Engineering's whoop series is that each whoop can be singly detached from the frame. This is a very useful maintenance feature. For example, if you crack a whoop or it is beyond repair, you can easily swap it out without having to change the entire frame. The sides of each whoop are still rough. Sand down the jagged edges with a small piece of sandpaper. Firstly, I used uh, 140 grit, then smoothed it out with 240 grit sandpaper. This will remove unnecessary material. Later, it will also make it easier for the battery to slide in between the wheels. Okay, now that the prep work is finished, it's assembly time. To begin, we will attach the camera mount. Insert your M2 nylon screw into the hole on the front of the frame. Turn it around and place the TPU camera holder strip over the screw. Next, we will place a shock absorber gummy over the screw. We can now mount the camera. Place the camera lens into the provided hole for the TPU camera holder. Roll up a small piece of foam rubber, approximately 4 by 1 centimeter. This will hold the camera into place and act as a shock absorber pillow. While holding it in place, take the free end of the TPU camera holder and place it over the protruding nylon screw. Now we can place the 3D printed TPU battery holder over the nylon screw, followed by the corresponding nylon bolt. Repeat the previous steps on the back post directly opposite, naturally excluding the steps for the camera. Insert the flight controller and secure both sides with two nylon bolts. Position the remaining gummy shock absorbers on each side, slide the nylon screws into place, and secure them with two nylon bolts. If the tips of your nylon screws extend over the bolt, take your side cutters and trim them down. Each bolt should be approximately 12 millimeters long. In order to mount the motors and whoops to the frame, you will need 12 1.4 by 5 millimeter screws. I'm using steel screws, however you can cut down on weight by using peak or titanium screws if that is an option.
For more detailed information about this build, check out my blog at nuxnick.com. Nylon screws can be brittle if exposed to direct shock. On this drone, the heads of the nylon screws are exposed to the bottom of the carbon fiber plate. Let's add a few strips of foam rubber to protect them. After cutting them out, I glued them on with B7000 glue. And now into your ear I sigh The song we wrote the bird and I As tender as a lullaby Simple and sweet For in its message true You won't find the rhymes that are smart There's nothing for lips to impart For the final touch, let's fold the power lead back on itself. This will make it easier to plug in our batteries after mounting them to the frame. And who can say they're not Secure the fold with some heat shrink tubing and you're all finished. Simple and the dry weight for this build is 22.6 grams. The total weight with the battery comes to 31.1 grams. The overall weight is a bit high, however, it can be improved in future iterations. For example, the UFL connector and dipole antenna add extra weight. Using a lighter, different flight controller could be an option, for example the Happy Model Diamond F4 with lightened load. One could also use peak instead of steel screws for the motors. As I said, this drone is a prototype and therefore still a work in progress. In spite of its weight, this tiny whoop flies like a rocket and doesn't lack in response or power. I can easily pull out of any heavy inertia-laden maneuvers and have yet to max out the throttle. After participating in IGA 4 this year, I realized most of my whoops were not up to snuff for some requirements. I was able to pull off most of the tricks, but didn't have the kick I needed sometimes. This got me thinking, and scouring the internet for inspiration. This whoop is the product of that search. The improved frame design makes me less anxious about taking hard crashes. Due to the modular design of this tiny whoop, a cracked frame is a thing of the past. If a whoop bites the dust, replacing it is a simple procedure that doesn't involve taking the entire drone apart. Comments and constructive criticism would be greatly appreciated, so make sure to leave a comment below. Thank you for watching my video. Make sure to like and subscribe, and we will see you next time.